Have you wondered how artists choose to arrange the different elements in their paintings? Do they always paint scenes exactly as they appear in real life? In this video, we learn about composition by looking closely at two paintings by Singaporean artist Georgette Chen, Singapore Waterfront and East Coast Venda. Widely recognized for her achievements and contributions as an artist and educator, Chen is a key figure in the development of modern art in Singapore. Composition refers to the arrangement of elements in an artwork. Is there a main focal point in a painting? How do the forms on a canvas relate to one another? Does the composition feel crowded or sparse? Balanced or unbalanced? In this tranquil riverside scene by Chen, we are first drawn to a boatman leaning idly on his boat in the bottom left corner of the painting. The boat is angled in a way that extends upwards from the bottom corner, guiding our gaze towards the stall along an invisible line. Our eyes then pick up elements further out from the shore. Notice how the trailing smoke from the ship in the distance, which travels along a line parallel to the first, directs us to the buildings on the opposite bank. As our eyes continue to travel upwards, we then notice the topmost wisp of clouds in the sky drifting in the opposite direction. They slant in a direction that echoes the boatman's tilted body. We now realize that Chen has deliberately organized her subjects in a zigzag manner across her canvas in order to guide the path of our eyes systematically across the fore, mid, and background. Through this example, we can see how an artist can use the arrangement of subjects in their paintings to draw viewers in and orientate their gaze. This is part of composition. Georgette Chen's exceptional life experiences as a professional artist living and working around the world shaped her practice and left a lasting legacy on the development of visual arts in Singapore. She relocated to Singapore in 1953 after navigating many turbulent years that included the Chinese revolutions of 1911 and 1949, as well as World War I and II. The lush landscapes of her new surroundings captured her imagination and became a long-lasting source of inspiration. During the transformative years of the 60s and 70s in post-independent Singapore, the changing face of the Singapore River bore testimony to the city-state's rapid development. This made the lively waterfront a favoured motif of many local artists like Chen. She was also particularly drawn to the colourful cast of characters and tropical way of life in her new homeland. During this period of her artistic career, she also made intimate portraits of the various people that she met and befriended. In East Coast Venda, three figures gaze at us as they fill up the entirety of the painting's foreground. From this close proximity, we are able to appreciate the nuances of their facial features. We notice the gentle expression on the woman's face, even as she balances a heavy basket on her head. A child offers us a warm smile, while a younger child peeks curiously from behind her shoulder. We are also able to perceive the texture and folds of their richly patterned batik clothes in vivid tones of red, blue, green, and yellow. While the figures in the foreground are depicted with busy detail, Chen takes care to balance her composition with a comparatively spare background which is neatly divided into the shore, sea, and sky. Her juxtaposition of the busy foreground and muted background adds to the atmosphere of this tropical scene. It captures both the idyllic seaside and the vibrant personalities of her figures. In this way, we see how composition allows Chen to express her affinity to her surroundings. 
In addition to her portraits and landscapes, still life painting was a genre that Chen most engaged with throughout her artistic practice. As an itinerant artist who lived and worked across China, France, the United States, and Malaya, Chen turned to still life painting as a way to reflect the specificity of each place she found herself in. They were also a way for her to experiment with how to represent the different elements that she selected and arranged with care. In many of her still lifes, Chen played with different compositional techniques in her search to find new ways to present seemingly ordinary objects from her surroundings. Chen's early still lifes, completed after her training at art academies in France, demonstrate more conventional compositional choices. Works from this period show scenes painted from a fixed point of view, with the main focus of the painting positioned largely in the center. These works were typically rendered on a canvas in horizontal format. As a young artist in China, she began to experiment with painting still lifes on canvases in vertical formats, which were typically reserved for portrait painting. These compositions became increasingly complex as she explored the textures, colors, and forms of multiple objects, highlighting the relationships and contrasts between them. After her relocation to Malaya, Chen was captivated by the rich variety of tropical fruits and cultural objects of her new surroundings. She would engage with fruits as a motif in her still lifes so often during this juncture in her practice that she would later refer to herself as Rambutan specialist in a letter to a friend. Her works from this period demonstrate a further range of compositional experiments, featuring tropical fruits in different configurations, deliberately arranged and painted in ways to express their unique qualities. Through these examples by Georgette Chen, we can see how artists use composition to achieve their desired expression of a chosen subject. These choices shape how we encounter and engage with a painting's subject matter, even ordinary, everyday scenes can be made more compelling and dynamic through careful and considered composition.